it's like planting seeds of doubt. So every single gaslighting event is just planting a seed of doubt in you, making you think that maybe you don't know what you're talking about, you don't know what you're experiencing, maybe you are irresponsible. Hi everyone, welcome back to Montreal in real life. I'm Montreal and this is my real life. And first of all, I just want to check in, make sure that everyone's doing okay, because this week has been cinematic, to say the least. I know I've been feeling it physically and mentally, seriously. Um, I just had to get up today, put on some lashes, eat some Cat and Crunch, and do this video, though, because I wanted to tell you all about gaslighting, which is a topic I've been kind of tiptoeing around, because I wasn't really sure how to explain it, but... Um, I was talking about it with a friend last night, and I actually started following this Instagram account um, by Hazel Mead, who is an illustrator. And today she posted a cartoon describing the different environments that gaslighting can take place in. And, you know, it just like was kind of like a sign to me, like, okay, it's time to like talk about it. And especially now that I have this great resource that I can share with you that totally helps me understand it hopefully helps you understand it too so i'm going to be talking about it a little broadly and then narrowing it down with um experiences of my own so i can kind of get an idea that this isn't something that just happens like once you know it's not like a one-time event um gaslighting is continual and it takes many forms and some of these forms i'm about to show you can totally overlap um but hopefully this is like this is like probably one of the simplest breakdowns I've seen of it and I'm still learning it. Thank you for coming on me with- coming on me? Oh wait, uh, thank you for coming with me on this journey of finding my voice. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so the first one um, is a scene that she drew inspired from the play Gaslight, which I will link down below if I find it but like I'm probably gonna find it because Google. So basically this is an illustration of reinforcing the idea that you're crazy and delusional which is something I have for sure experienced um, with my narcissistic abuser. That kind of just changing your reality to suit what they want to make you believe you did or you didn't say something or that they didn't say something that you totally heard it's like one of those moments where you think you need to take out your record your your voice memos app and record them so that you could play it back later and the next one is the tangled example um throwing in compliments among degrading comments to confuse you and to make you feel like your emotional investment was worth it this is the type of thing that the narc would say, well, you're so annoying and stupid, but I love you, you know, kind of that you suck, 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 but it's okay because I'm okay with it. The next one is an example that could be prevalent in friendships, warping others' perceptions of you. And I would say slash warping your perceptions of others so here we've got this one friend talking out her mouth to both of her other friends trying to create a divide between them and this 100 percent happened even though my narcissist and i were in a romantic relationship he did try and do this with two of my best friends at the time he was trying to say that they were ignoring me and talking crap about me um behind my back and saying like they didn't want to talk to me and that they would only talk to me through him and y'all and i'll do a whole episode on this but basically like basically he really he really tried this the next one is an example that could be prevalent in parent-child relationships, which is wearing you down over time. And I think this one is also more commonly um, associated with gaslighting, talking about like, don't be silly, you're overreacting again, you know, to something that clearly has upset the child. And instead of validating their feelings, they're just trying to minimize them and make their abusive behavior normal. This next one is an example that might be in romantic relationships, shifting the blame on you, 
okay, 100%, I could say that this has happened, um, you know, they're gonna say something really rude to you, you're gonna try and stick up for yourself, and then they're gonna come back at you like, whoa, why are you talking to me like that? Why are you trying to make me the bad guy? Like, you're the one who brought it up. Try to make you feel guilty for bringing up your hurt feelings. Next, we have people in power and cult leaders convincing you that everyone else is lying and that they are the only credible source of info. This one, I think, is one of those that can be transferred. I mean, I think they all can be transferred amongst each other, like happen simultaneously, if that makes sense. Um, cause someone doesn't have to be in a cult to try and gaslight you into believing that everyone else is a liar and they're the only ones who's telling the truth. Definitely a characteristic of a narcissistic abuser to think that they're the only ones with the correct information and they're going to try and convince you of that. Next we have lying to cause confusion and make you question your judgment. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I have a great example of this. Um, one time my narcissist and I were planning to meet at 7 and I told him, you know, I might come around like 7.15 because I'm coming from another event first and then we just agreed to have our event take place at 7.15 because if that's the time that I was going to get there anyway, you know, we, we could just like make the event at 7.15 instead of 7. So this conversation took place like a couple days before. Then on the day of, he's like texting me, getting all mad, talking about why aren't you here at 7? And I'm trying to tell him like we changed the time to 7.15. And he was like, no, we didn't, like you're late. Like how could you do this to me? It's so disrespectful. And he was just having a whole fit. Like he was tripping. And I was like, okay, it's not like I just called you and said, like, I'm gonna be late, I'm coming at 7.15, it's like we actually changed the time to accommodate the fact that I was coming from another event, like, we changed the time to 7.15, so why are you trying to, like, he was tripping, and that was why, because he was trying to gaslight me, and, you know, like I said earlier, these things aren't just, like, one single isolated event. Like, the gaslighting doesn't just, like, snap happen after just this one time of, you know, trying to change my judgment. Um, but it's, like, planting seeds of doubt. So, every single gaslighting event is just planting a seed of doubt in you, making you think that maybe you don't know what you're talking about, you don't know what you're experiencing, maybe you are irresponsible, you know? Like, maybe I am rude for being coming at 7 15 even though I thought we changed it to that time you know it's like just these little like thing little like instances that chip away at your um, confidence in yourself and confidence in your judgment that allows them to ultimately manipulate the information around you um, next we have a workplace example which is showing disapproval no matter what you can do no right and they can do no wrong that is totally something that's characteristic of a narcissist as well um i mean it's kind of in the title of their name Narciss okay my recording stopped but i think i was on the second to last one their name is narcissist they think that they're completely right and everyone else is doing everything wrong the last one is an example of racial gaslighting where dismissing, even reframing your feelings and reality occurs. So we have the picture of the guy, he's being patted down and he's like, man, I'm being racially profiled again. And then the woman is saying, why don't you always make it about race? You know, I don't see color. You're the one that always brings it up. And this is basically showing like one, invalidating the person's feelings and experiences, but literally doing it right as the thing is happening so in an instance of an abusive situation well i mean this is an abusive gaslighting is abusive like period um but in a situation like of an interpersonal relationship so this could be literally when they have just called you a name or have just physically hurt you and then the narcissist is gonna say like why do you always think that this is happening why are you always trying to like start something why you're trying to talk about your feelings the author of this um hazel mead she has a long description below that has some more resources such as um podcasts and other channels that you could watch so i would go and check her out on instagram hazel mead and um, but she also says that 
you know, some people don't, like, realize that they're gaslighting. They may be unaware of it, but other people may be doing it because they know exactly what they're doing and they feel insecure about losing power, so they use it to manipulate and gain power. And I want you to know that a narcissistic abuser always knows what they're doing, so there's no reason to excuse them on this one. Um, there's no reason to excuse anyone really on gaslighting, but it can be seeming like someone maybe doesn't know that they're doing it and they just need to be educated. But again, a narcissist and a narcissistic abuser always knows what they're doing. And thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informational and I hope that everyone's taking care of themselves and that next week is going to be a lot better for us all. All right. Have a good night. She say I'm a dog, I'm a man's best friend, best friend I guess my girl best friend, my best friend I, I, I just